This episode of GMK is brought to you by Devil's Gap Marina, located at the end of Matheson Bay Road on beautiful Lake of the Woods and open all year round. Good morning, Kenora. Good morning, Kenora. How are you, Mr. Matt Kennedy, second day in a row that we are together? I'm so good, Chris. How are you this morning? You know what? I'm fantastic. That's excellent. I woke up at 7 this morning and I feel great. I woke up at 7 this morning and I also feel fantastic. Nice. You know what else makes me feel fantastic? Good weather. Yeah? <clears throat> Outside. It's a bit cold, though. It's a little chilly, but it's going to get way better. The Good Morning Kenora weather is brought to you by Casey's Grill and Bar. High of minus 4 today and a low of minus 15. Tomorrow, high of minus two, a low of minus seven, with a touch of snow. And then into uh, Friday, high of minus seven, low of minus 13. So that's not so bad getting into the St. Paddy's Day weekend. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Got a little four leaf clover on the screen there yes. to remind everybody. Very good, yeah, yeah. exactly. You need to be reminded of such great events as, uh, as St. Patrick's Day. So there's, uh, there's a lot going on. We actually have a couple of sheets here of all these different things that, uh, that are going on in the community. Such as tomorrow, Dog's Life mm -hmm. presents the Raise the Woof comedy show. It's like Raise the Roof, Raise the Woof. Oh, I get yeah. it. I Featuring get two comedians, it. James Olaf and Lamont Ferguson. Mm -hmm. uh, that is at the Days Inn. Doors open at 7 o'clock, and the show starts uh, at 8. Age of majority only. So Nice. Yeah, and they got a bunch of prizes. Cash, uh, cash bar, silent auction. Uh, there's a door prize of a $300 gas card. And all you have to do is walk in the door and you get entered to win. That's 300 I do believe so. Nice. Yeah, not bad, eh? I, I could use one of those. Yeah, me too. It's kind of expensive to go. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It's a good time. Uh, also, a good time. We have a couple fine, fine gentlemen from the uh, Kenora Fire Services. Uh, here we have Larry Conlon and Brian Birch. They're going to talk to us about uh, a little bit of um, ice road uh, safety because it mm. is getting nice. The lake is opening up. And these fine gentlemen are going to tell us uh, a little bit about how to avoid drowning. They also uh, had a good chuckle at us complaining about getting up at 7 a.m. So, I bet, exactly. Yeah. I imagine their shift started probably at 5. Yeah. Something like that. So Earlier, maybe. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to give them some better than doubt. So, uh, yeah, so not a bad little show going on today. It's going to be, uh, be kind of good. So Also, uh, we just want to remind you, uh, tonight, it's Wednesday, which means it's bingo. So It's also the night of the big draw. Yeah, that too. For the uh, Lost Fingers tickets. Yeah. So, uh, bingo, 7 o'clock tonight, Shaw TV. The, uh, <laughs> the, the place we can get the tickets are scrolling on the screen right now. When you buy your tickets, make sure you get a TV bingo card. I messed up your flow. Uh, you did? That's okay. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Uh, and you're right, Lost Fingers tickets, uh, last day of our contest today, we have two tickets to give away. So you can do that by going to facebook.com backslash goodmorningkenora or email us at goodmorningkenora at shaw.ca. And we will announce the winner tomorrow. Absolutely. And that concert, Sunday, March 17th, Knox United Church, 7.30 p.m. And it's the last concert of their season, I believe you said? Correct, sir. So this is the one to go to. Absolutely. And it's going to be kind of good. It's a different, uh, different vibe, different feel. I mean, they're wearing pink suits, as we said yesterday. Yep. So get in, uh, check them out. It's a tame pink, though, so... Yeah, a little conservative. Yep. Like it lots. So it's good stuff. Good, good stuff. Messy Church, too. Mm -hmm. Got Messy Church. That's tonight. Uh, the first one, March 13th. Basically, Messy Church. I believe it takes place at St. Albans yep. Church. And it's uh, basically just sort of a more relaxed uh, church service for people who, I guess, don't typically go to church, don't belong to an organized uh, religion mm -hmm. of any kind. Just come and get the basics. Absolutely, sit it's down. messy. Yeah, I think they're having spaghetti dinner. So. Okay, that's part of the mess too, I guess. I think so, yeah. You so have to use your hands, maybe. Oh, yeah, I think so. Hands-on. Yeah. It's a hands-on meal. So it's good. And uh, speaking of religion in, uh, in world news, no Pope yet. Nope. Uh, I know. They're dragging their heels on this thing. So, I want a new Pope so bad. I know. <laughs> I, want, I want some direction in my non-religion life. Got their hopes up, Kim was saying, because of the uh, smoke. Yep. When they lit it. It, goes, it was a bit gray at first. And then hits black. So. Yeah. Uh, 115 potential candidates go into conclave, and they're going to come out with one new pope. So, I don't know. I'm voting Chris Jones. 
Hey, that's a good idea. Yeah. A Chris Jones for Pope. Chris for Pope. I could see you in the hat. You know what? I think I could rock that hat. Yeah. Actually, you could eat spaghetti out of it <laughs> with your hands. <laughs> Messy church is going to catch on even for the Pope. Yeah. Could, yeah. I think so. I think we're in. So <laughs> on that note, on that sacrilegious note, let's go to a quick break. Let's bring in uh, Larry and Brian. Let's talk about um, some ice for safety. Cool. Kenora would like to thank Wind and Water Interiors for being a proud supporter of local television programming. Wind and Water Interiors, 326 Second Street South. Watch the reigning Remmer Renwick Cup champs, the Kenora Senior Thistles, defend their title against the Southern Ontario champs in a best two out of three, March 29th, 30th, and 31st at the Kenora Rec Center. Get your tickets at the door and see it broadcast live only on Shaw TV. One tree over its lifetime will remove about 40 tons of pollution from the atmosphere and replace it with pure air. Think what millions of trees will do. Help Tree Canada grow clean air. Trees do their part. Let's do ours. My name is Noah, and I'm a War Amps champ. I lost my leg in an accident. Now, I'm a safety ambassador. Today, I'm part of a great Eskimos tradition. I'm the 13th player, and I represent all the fans. Whatever game you play, play safe. A message from the Eskimos, the CFL, and the War Amps. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome, Brian and Larry. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks, Chris. Good to be here. Thanks for having us. No problem. Thank you for coming on. I mean, it, it is the time of the season where, like I said before, the, the ice is breaking up. It's getting nicer. So this is a really great time to have you gentlemen on and talk a little bit about some safety. Yeah, it's, uh, it's coming up at that time of year, although this morning it doesn't really feel like it out there, minus whatever it is, 20 or 14. Mm -hmm. uh, things are starting to freeze up again, but it's going to start warming up, and... Uh, Things are going to start breaking up and you know, people are, you know, they're used to going out in the ice, cross-country skiing, ice fishing, that kind of thing. Yep. You're going to have to really watch you know, how, how the conditions are going to change. Absolutely. I think here, like, when it, it kind of gives that like, nice little freeze in the morning, it kind of freezes over a bit and then people kind of forget that uh, it's not that thick. Yeah, it'll, it'll freeze over and, uh, you know, the landings are the worst part, uh, especially the south side, south shores where the sun is baking on it and... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you may go out in the morning, it may be good, you come back in the afternoon and there's no ice. Mm. So it's, uh, you know, you really got to pay attention to this time of the year. Absolutely. So um, if people are going out, I mean, are there, are there typically I mean, where the water is moving faster through the channels? I think that's sort of really, you have to really be careful because the, the ice goes faster up there. Yeah, that, that, that's just knowing where you're going on the ice. Yeah. Like the ice roads are pretty good. They're, they're made where there's uh, no current sort of... Uh, okay. They're pretty safe uh, if you're out in your snow machines or out uh, cross-country skiing. Uh, you have to know where you're going. Um, on average, about 200 people a year die in uh, cold water drownings. Wow. And all these accidents, well, we, we don't call them accidents in the fire department. Uh, okay. There's no such thing as an accident. They can all be prevented. Right. They're preventable injuries. So, okay. so and, then, and that's, uh, that's 200 just for the, I guess, the winter season, you could say, from the, or just this, just this time of year? Uh, well, basically all you wonder, but it gets worse this time of year. It, uh, mm -hmm. Would you say, Brian, this time well, of year is the, the worst? Yeah, and we talked, uh, on the way over, we talked how last year the ice went so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, we, were at the, we were at a fishing derby last year with the EMS people, and um, the ice went, they lost, I think it was eight inches of ice they lost in a day because it was 20, I think it was 20 degrees Celsius on wow. the day in March there. So, yeah. so I mean, as we were, we were talking coming over, this year, the ice seems to be going a little bit slower because we're, we're around normal temperatures. Mm -hmm. So, but as we get closer to April, those temperatures are going to get higher and higher. And the higher the temperatures goes, the faster the ice goes. Absolutely. So, uh, if you're on the ice and you do go through, 
Um, what, first thing I mean, there's the di first danger is well, drowning and hypothermia. Yeah, first danger is drowning. Uh, the first thing that happens when you fall through the ice is what what's called the gasp reflex. I know if you jump in the shower in the morning and you turn it on, you get that cold blast of water. The, what's the first thing you do? <gasps> you take that big gasp. Right. That's you cannot prevent that from happening. It comes from your lungs. So if you fall in the ice or fall in the water and you go face first and your your face is underwater, you're going to do that gasp and you're going to drown. There's there's no you're, that's it. <laughs> Game over right there. So if you manage to fall in, you yeah. know, put your hand over your mouth, you'll do the gasp. Once you fall in the water, you got about a minute to get your breathing under control. So you're going to be panicking, splashing around, so you want to get your breathing under control and turn around to go where you came from because that's the most solid ice, most likely. So you want to get your arms up on the ice, get your legs kicking, get yourself horizontal, and get yourself out so you can get up on the ice, and then you want to roll away. You don't want to stand up right away because that's, you know, you, you, you just fell through there. So <laughs> you want to get uh, get far away, and you got about ten minutes to do that. And if you don't, if you're not going to get out in ten minutes, you're not going to get out. But but that doesn't mean to say you're going to die hypothermia right there. Right. Um, there's studies by a professor from uh, University of Manitoba, Dr. Mm -hmm. Gordon Giesbrook, Dr. Popsicle, they call him. <laughs> He, uh, he's actually gone hypothermic, I don't know how many times. Wow. And he's practiced this, and there's a, there's a rule that he says. It's one, ten, and one. Okay. You have one minute to get your breathing under control, ten minutes to get yourself out of the water, and you have one hour to survive if you're in the water. So if you can't get out, get your arms up in the ice, freeze yourself in, you know, someone's going to come and get you. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're with somebody and they fall in, you don't want to become a victim too. Right. So you want to talk to them, reassure them, oh, you're going to get out, you're going to get out, come this way, you know, kind of thing. Uh, reach for them. You get a pole, get a belt, anything, you can reach them. And uh, throw, if you've got a throw bag, a rope or uh, anything like that. A toe strap, a snow strap, machine or something. Or, uh, just a stick, something they can hang on to. Yeah. So you, just you give them assistance. Going? Yeah, you don't want to get too, too close. And plus, if he gets himself on the ice, and then your weight is there too. The, the weight, the bo weight of both of you, might be enough to break where you are. Absolutely. So, okay, so then yes, that's the, the other thing is, is if you're going out on the ice, you should definitely go with somebody else. Yeah. If yes. the if the conditions are iffy, you know, if you're going on the ice road, like we're talking about this thing, is in this well-traveled areas, it mm -hmm. might not be so bad. But this time of year, when the ice is getting bad, if you're going to go places where the ice might not be so good, it's always good to have a buddy with you for sure. If you get into trouble, you got some help. Absolutely. Especially, you know, sorry, going out snow machining, mm -hmm. cross country skiing, make sure you tell somebody where you're going. You know, you don't come back at the end of the day, nobody knows where to go look for you. It's true. I think with the reliance <coughs> of people, you know, I have, my, I have my phone with me. If I get into trouble, I can just call someone. But if you're in the water, your cell phone's not going to work. No, no. No, and this is like I said, and if you're up some areas around here, we don't have cell coverage. So, you know, you. Yeah. <laughs> the snow machine breaks down, you got to. Yeah. Nobody so knows where you are. There's some common sense stuff. Have a little kit with you, you know, where you've got like waterproof matches and things like fire starter of some kind and you know, things like that. And that's a really good point. Like I in my even my car, I didn't change a trip just to Thunder Bay and I didn't I looked I don't have anything road safety. So I actually had to think put it put it like a backpack together and threw it in my trunk. And that's just just driving just in case. Yeah, so and that's just common sense. Yeah, that's absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. So if you are, if people are out there, if you, you know, it's it's really nice. Like I went for a, a walk on the trails yesterday, and you can kind of see around the shore. And if people are going to go out, a couple of things they really should keep in mind is tell people where you're going, um, go with maybe a buddy, and then have some safety uh, sure. things with you. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So people, like if like Larry says, if you don't show up, people got at least an idea where to start looking for you. Absolutely. And check your conditions before you go. Like I say, the ice roads, you know the. It may be good when you go out in the morning. Uh, last year down in Minnesota, they had a group of fishermen that went out in the morning on their quads, and they were out in the big water, and they managed to get out in the morning, but during the day the ice broke away from the shore. They are on a huge ice floe floating out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, you're not getting off that. <laughs> They're not getting off that. Well, not with your equipment anyway, and that kind of... No. And it, another thing, it, it sucks to lose some equipment. Yeah. So no. right? It's expensive because I think they helicoptered the quads off the ice floe. So that's yeah, pricey. Yeah. 
It is a little bit. Or, I mean, if you're even on a snow machine, your snow machine goes down, I mean, it's a $10,000 piece of equipment that's gone. That it has and, to be recovered. Too. Yeah, and yeah. there's probably some fines by the Ministry of Environment. That, if you don't recover it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So you want to avoid all that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, if you are out, um, just pay a lot more attention to what you're doing. Let people know where you're at. So great, great advice. Good stuff. Um, also, what you're here, you're going to talk about is the season, um, because you're talking about uh, springing forward. Good right. Talks. Last weekend, everybody changed their uh, batteries and their clocks. Changed the batteries and their clock. Changed their clocks. <laughs> <laughs> Got me going ahead here. I'm sprung for it. Uh, remember to change the batteries and your smoke alarms and mm -hmm. your carbon monoxide detectors. Right. Make sure you test them monthly. Absolutely. Well, I think it's, it's really good advice for me because I, I forgot to even just change my clocks ahead. So even this morning, I take a look at, took a look at my microwave and I'm like, it's really not 6.30. So, I mean, I went and I changed that. So then as soon as I was coming on the trip, you guys are coming on. I know what I'm doing when I get home tonight. So I thought so. you got up at 7 this morning. Well, I did, but it was like <coughs> my, my alarm. Never mind. <laughs> Caught me in a line. No, it's just because I forgot to change my clocks ahead. I mean, with my, <clears throat> with my phone, like my, it automatically changes. Yeah. So I have a couple clocks in my house, and I just I forgot to do that. And then it, as a reminder, you know, I, I have my two smoke alarms mm -hmm. and my carbon, dis carbon monoxide. So definitely have to change those as well. And make sure you test them monthly and... Yeah, make sure they work. Absolutely. So, uh, and then we got a note here, uh, chimney fires and the things like that. So how often, just, if, I don't know, is that a big issue this time of year? Or? Uh, not so much this time of year. Um, hmm. Beginning of the year where your chimney, you know, your sits you know, all year all idle. Actually, it's, it's a concern all year round. You should clean it regularly. Okay. Uh, this time of year, you probably don't have as hot of fires burning, so it, it tends to build up a little more. Creosote, especially as it's choked back a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just keep an eye on them, uh, and like you should be cleaning it regularly. And it doesn't mean just because it's springtime and it's warm that you don't have to clean your chimney. You still, if you're using it, you still have to clean it. Absolutely. Great stuff, gentlemen. Well, thank you very much for coming on. It's been great. It's been ed educational. Thank you. So, if people want any more information about any of this, uh, just can you give, give you guys a call? Or is yeah, they can come up to the uh, up to the fire service. Uh, we're there all the time, over 24 hours. Give us a call. Stop in. Excellent. Thanks, gentlemen, very much. Um, we're going to go to a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to bring Matt on, and we're going to wrap up the show. Please join us April 5th at 9 a.m. for a special episode of GMK, when our guest will be RCMP officer Tad Milmine. Tad will be speaking about his anti-bullying initiative that is now recognized across the country. He has an important message, and we hope you'll tune in. It can begin with the simplest of gestures. A gift of time, energy, commitment. Something precious that grows stronger with every hand that touches it. And grows across communities and through the very fabric of our nation. And begins once again with the simplest of gestures. To Canada's six and a half million volunteers, thanks. Welcome back, everyone. I forgot my water. Oh, I was going to bring my water back. It's over there. Way to go. I asked Josh to get it. He's just laughing at me. Now your water. He's, yeah, bully him. Get oh. my water. <laughs> All right, no, no, don't bully him. Anti-bullying. Going to have a special guest. Mm -hmm. In about a, under a month's time, Tad Milmine, RCMP officer. Saw mm -hmm. the little ad there. Yep. He's my cousin, by the way. I don't say that in the ad. I only had 15 seconds, so... Mm, fantastic. Yeah, he's going to be on uh, talking about anti-bullying. Yep, because he's got a uh, countrywide initiative, touring the country, and he's stopping here. Very cool. What a big deal, that's why. Yeah, that is why. Yep, nothing to do with family. So, uh, it is, uh, speaking of big deal, there is uh, lots going on. We have a huge list here. Um, 
The city, our city, our wonderful, wonderful city. City of Kenora. Correct. Uh, is set to approve the 2013 budget. Uh, decrease in municipal tax rate is being used to combat the increase of the MPAC assessments in the city. Nice. So Yeah, so very, very cool. Um, just a couple highlights. Councillor uh, Ron Luddy says they're really, they're working hard. They want to reduce the rate by about a percent. So, which is a big deal because you know what, as a taxpayer, you could, thank you, Council. Yeah. I appreciate that. I don't actually know what MPAC is, to be honest. Uh, that is the, uh, when they did the uh, property assessment. Okay. Uh, I should know this then. You should. I am a property owner. You are a property owner. Uh, was it last year I got a letter in the mail saying they've assessed your property and it's now worth this much, so pay us. Okay. And it was completely independent of the city, so it was like, huh. So they kind of arbitrarily uh, jacked my rate. But now it's going down 1%. Well, they're trying to, they want to, yeah, the lower their municipal taxes to offset that. So thank you very much, Council. We like you. Also, um, there's going to be, um, when the rates combined uh, to the educational tax will decrease a little bit too. The reduction works out to about 1.41%. Nice. So that's very, very nice. So thanks. People really like it when you decrease taxes. It's so true. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's, it's very nice. I mean, how, how do we pay for things? Taxes, but it's always nice when we get a break. Yeah. Very, very good. So that's really good. We like it. I've got some news. Let's hear it. Do you ski? Do you snowboard? No. No? Okay. okay. Well, I do. I, I'm a snowboarder. Unfortunately, my snowboard is in Vancouver. I left it there at my sister's place because oh. I didn't have room to bring it home. But if I did, yep. this week, Mount Evergreen is open for additional days because, as we have not really mentioned yet, it is March break this week. It is March it's break. It's not a March break for you and I. That's probably why we aren't talking about it because we'd rather just ignore it. We're That's exactly just, it. We're jealous of the teachers it's and like the students. It's like a knife in the kidney right now. Yeah, my fiance is a teacher, so she's off all week. <sighs> so... Uh, but yeah, the Mount Evergreen is open additional hours. Um, Monday the 11th, that already happened, but today and Friday, they're open from 10 till 4. Nice. Uh, and they'll be open for night skiing on the, on the 15th at 5 instead of 6. Nice. So there's an extra hour there. And that's mm -hmm. to accommodate those who want to hang around the day skiing. But wait, it gets better uh, for the March better. break. All rentals will be free Shazam. with the purchase of a lift pass so I could go. Because I could get a free rental with the purchase of my lift pass. Nice. Yeah. So you know what? Snowboarding is one of those things in my head. Snowboarding is awesome. Yeah. Like Sean White, all those guys. I, I think about it, it's like, I can see it. Like, I can snowboard. But then, in reality, it would be a train wreck. Yeah. Absolute train wreck. So I'd be like, eh, no. It would never live up to my expectations. That's kind of like how I was like, co-hosting this show would, would be awesome. But <laughs> in reality, when I come here and do it, it's, I kind of make it a train wreck. <laughs> but you know what? It's the nicest train wreck I've been on, so. That's good. <laughs> lots of survivors. Yeah, lots of survivors. It's always fun. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, educational. How about fishing? Do you ever do you ever fish? Once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Have you but, heard about this? You know what? I kind of did hear about that, but explain it to the audience because I don't know if they did. Okay, there's a winter fish off this Saturday in Falcon Lake. Apparently, there's going to be like uh, 1,400. Does it say 1,400 people are wow. probably coming, and they could win up to. Ready? Ninety thousand dollars in prizes. Makes me want to fish. Over ninety thousand dollars in prize money. It that's says. Pretty, that's so, impressive. Adult tickets are seventy dollars, and uh, child tickets are thirty. So very, very, very and cheap, with much to win. Lots going on, and uh, not as exciting as milkshakes. But Bob yeah. Ray, the interim um, head cheese for the liberals, is going to be in Kenora. He's in Kenora. He's coming to Kenora. Uh, at the Riverview Lodge, 1 o'clock. He's going to be there. He's going to do a bit of a tour. Um, the Dryden Native uh, Fellowship Center at 2 o'clock. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. Later this afternoon, uh, there'll be a fundraiser called Thanks a Million, Bob. And you can meet Bob Ray. And get an new, autograph. Get an autograph because maybe he will be the uh, liberal leader when they do the election in April. Maybe. Maybe. So now's a chance. Fingers to, crossed. Yeah. Now's a chance to get him when he's like, it's a nobody. Yeah. And then and get him the autograph, like, get that picture with him. Where you're sell like, it on eBay. And then when he becomes cat, like captain of the ship, yeah. then you're like, I knew that guy when he was nothing. Yeah. So. And by the way, that milkshake reference was a callback to yesterday when we talked a lot about the shamrock shake. Oh, shamrock shake. And uh, Jack, uh, D Jack Dawson, <laughs> who uh, is the producer of the show, <laughs> thought we talked a bit too much about it. So that's why we've got these pages of information for you today. Yes. 
it's to the No Milkshake Show. It's No Milkshake. You know what? I'm bringing a Shamrock Shake tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, do it. Let's do it. Are they mint flavored? Uh, who cares? They're I'm not actually going to drink the I just the assume thing. they're green. Yeah, it's just green. I'm so, not going to drink it. Green um, uh, speaking of things that are, that are green and probably not healthy for you, uh, drugs. The healthy unit. Some drugs are green. Yeah, That's a good tie-in. I yeah. know they turn you green a little bit. You know, uh, drug, Health Unit releases a drug action study. Over 2,000 students from across the district participated in the study. So it's like, oh, so one of the major findings, um, the underestimate the drug use among your peers. So when you're sitting there thinking, you know, we're here, it's like, yeah. you know what? Are you a casual drug user? I assume no, but maybe you are. <laughs> I am not. See, neither am I. So you know what? But still, I mean, that's one of the things that they. Yeah, but I don't know that either. Hmm? It's <laughs> yeah, there's nothing casual about it, apparently. So uh, the one thing they say is more than half the students uh, reported said there's not enough activities to do, and that's why they turn to drugs. That's the go-to excuse. Right, and uh, for the record, in my controversial moment, because I haven't had one in a while, that is a whole lot of um, malarkey. That's crazy. So I think it's... Uh, there's, there's plenty to do. There's tons to do. You know why? Because you can go to Mount Evergreen the entire March break and, and go... And get a free rental. And go snowboarding. So quit doing drugs. And go snowboarding. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, get a, get a free snowboard. Yeah, like, come on. There's tons of stuff to do. You can do tons of stuff. They invented something called Xbox. Yeah. You can sit on the couch, eat potato <laughs> chips, and a shamrock shake, and play Xbox. I, this advice is getting bad now. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I went back. That's kind of like a whole other addiction <laughs> that you're uh, advising people to get involved in. Well, exactly. I mean, you can just pirate your movies and watch it on. I mean, wait, stop. Anyway. Whoa, pirating movies, did you say? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to just take off my mic. <laughs> I know. I was a good dig to Matt because you always know, talk about Matt. Yeah. Uh, Matt's famous. He's a, he's a movie maker. This I am famous. That's why I'm on TV. That's so. right. And on anti bullying commercials. Yeah. So I made that commercial, and yeah. it looks like a. A movie, so. It does. Fantastically talented. Yet. And speaking of uh, bullying, tomorrow the most cultured man and the marshal of Kanara, Dave Kane, is going to be here on the show. Whoa. Yeah, so he'll put it. And end I'm not going to be here. No. He's, you know, well, that's why. He, he put an end to your bullying. Good. So he's coming on the show tomorrow, which is really, really great. Uh, and also Friday, of course, don't forget Dog's Life. Uh, Chris Madsen will be here. I thought she was going to be here today. and I do believe so. She was supposed to be, but, I mean, things come up, right? Yep. Busy schedules, schedules, busy lives. So At least uh, she'll be here Friday. Absolutely. With a puppy, yeah. with a cute dog. So still having fun with your, uh, your puppies? I saw your pictures of bathing them. Yeah. They're, they're a lot of work and a lot of fun. They're very cute. It's prepping you for... Um, for uh, Parenthood. Parenthood, yes. Yeah. Exactly it. Um, Peace. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the next couple of days are going to be really fantastic weather, getting ready for St. Patty's Day. Uh, the Good Morning Canara weather brought to you by Casey's Grill and Bar. A high of minus 4 and a low of minus 15. Tomorrow, a high of minus 2, a low of minus 7 with a little bit of snow. About a centimeter. A bit of butt. And then on Friday, getting into the weekend, high of minus 7, low of minus 13 with a little bit more snow. <sighs> no more snow, please. I know, I'm done. I am done with winter. Yeah, me too. It just, you know what, I want, I want spring, summer, I want it all to be here so we can get back to enjoying the nice, nice weather. I like the sounds of that. Me too. Yeah. Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a uh, particularly busy summer, I think, for both of us. Yeah, okay. It's going to be crazy. I have, like, tons of soccer stuff to do and all this stuff. You have, uh, you know. It does not even compare to my summer. No, that's true. Yeah. I'll give I've you. I've got to get married and make a movie this summer, so, and keep my job here. Pretty tough. Yeah. Well, wow. I'll uh, I'll put uh, we'll get a calendar of uh, of how much you know uh, betting betting days to see how much if you can make it through there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. See, so and uh, you know what? You what are you gonna bet on which side? Um. And what is the bet for that I'll like lose my mind or? Yeah, I think it's you're okay. probably gonna go a little nuts. Yeah. Well. Little. I yeah. bet for that. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it is gonna be um, it is gonna be a fantastic week. It's gonna be a, a great time. And uh, this weekend too, there's a lot of things that you can get out and go and do. Again, Lost Fingers, St. Yep. Patty's Day. I know there's uh, Casey's is having a thing. Last chance to get in the draw for Lost Fingers. Yeah, don't forget about that. Last chance. Good morning, Kenora at Shaw.ca. You can enter there. You can enter on facebook.com backslash good morning Kenora. Just throw your name in. We will draw the winner and announce it tomorrow. It could be you. It could be. It you. could be you watching right now. You could be going to a free show. 
Absolutely. So enjoy your day. Have great fun. Uh, and we will see you bright and early tomorrow with Constable Dave Kane. It's been great, Chris. Thanks for having me. This episode of GMK was brought to you by Devil's Gap Marina, located at the end of Matheson Bay Road on beautiful Lake of the Woods and open all year round.